Hello, welcome back to the Yelling Rivalry and Acting Channel. Today, I will be discussing the equipment of the typical World War I German soldier. I do apologize if you hear uh, wind effects. It is quite windy today. Uh, not really the best time to record, but I wanted to try it out, and here it is. I hope you now, enjoy. Uh, during the first few years of the war, 1914-1915, uh, the German army issued these. This was known as the Pickelhaube. It was constructed of hard uh, boiled leather with brass finishings. With a brass eagle. Uh, this is not a very good replica. I got this off of Amazon for 60 bucks. Uh, I'm not a reenactor uh, of any sort for German World War One, uh, so I, I just got this. I thought it was quite nice. Uh, this is what the liner looks like. Uh, this chin strap, or it can be used as a chin strap. Uh, this looks quite dorky on me. It looks really dorky. Um, but that's a pickle hobble. Um, they did not wear this, uh, justice in battle. They had a cover for it because, of course, it would be, uh, too shiny and such. So, you know, you don't want to, you want protection, especially in the trenches trenches so it would have a cloth cover with a regimental number next i will be talking about the m16 m17 and m18 Stahlhelm. now this is a world war ii model m35 i got this from ima so this would not be historically correct uh, if you were portraying a world war one german soldier but you get the idea. Again, this is an M35 model. During World War II, there were uh, about three recognized models. Uh, I guess you could say there was four. Uh, you also had the M45, which those weren't really official. But uh, when they realized that uh, this isn't maybe the best camouflage even with the cover, uh, on, uh, they switch to Stahlhelms, which basically it's the same thing. It has little lugs, so you can put a Strimpen Panzer. Uh, sorry if I'm uh, pronouncing that wrong. I'm I'm not German of any sort. I don't believe, <laughs> but it has little lugs, and you would have a. It was usually the Strimpen Panzer was used for uh, machine gunners, I believe, but. It protected your ears, unlike the pickle haba. Uh, and if shrapnel hit you, it would be a lot, you had more likely chance to survive from this than from this. Uh, so there were three models during World War One: the M16, the M17, and the M18, all with different slight modifications. Uh, if, but if you want all the different uh, things, I'd suggest you go to History Secrets. His YouTube channel is really great. He goes into all the uh, different sorts of models and goes into depth. Uh, for the sake of time and my lack of knowledge, I will not be doing that. But this is the liner of the M35. Uh, the liner was quite different. Uh, in the M16, but look up some photos. Uh, I really wish I could show you, but I, I'm, that is not available. So next, I will be talking about the Feldmutz, also known as a field. So this is the Feldmutz. Um, I got this incredibly cheap off of Repl Replica Militaria, I believe. I know you aren't supposed to buy there, but I got this when I was younger uh, and didn't know too, too much. Yes, it has a ginormous hole 
uh, because I wore it, I, I was doing some photos and such, and I wore it in the winter, and it was snowing, and I let it sit by the fireplace, I look over, my hat's smoking, and yep, create a big hole in it. I uh, usually, the hair's in the way, gotta get my hair trimmed. Usually it would have two uh, little circles right here. Uh, they were on, but they were embroidered. Uh, they weren't like the metal ones that they actually had uh, during the war. So again, it, it was incredibly cheap. Uh, it's not very historically accurate, um, but th that's it. Um, of course, you know, regular line infantry, they had red, you know, red piping, all that. Uh, so red, but I believe the Jaggers had like a, a green and green line. This is what the inside looks like. It has my name right there. But that is what the inside looks like. Um... I like this one. Uh, it's very comfortable. It's probably my favorite. Uh, the pickle haba, it's kind of awkward on me. And then the Stahlhelm, uh, it, it gets heavy, especially it gets very heavy. So this is really, really nice if I'm just chilling in the trench or I'm walking around, you know, shooting uh, those Frenchies. So. I enjoy it. Okay. Wow. Look, would you look at that wind? <laughs> um, next, I will be talking about uh, your belt gear and your webbing. Okay. So, webbing gear. Um, I do want to note that my bread bag is definitely not historically accurate. Um... It's after a World War II model. Uh, it is even, they'd even use it in World War II. So, um, keep that in note. My canteen is not a original or reproduction. It is a Czechoslovakian M60 canteen. Um, again, I'm a reenactor, or I'm not a reenactor, but I'm just trying to get the look. So, hopefully that will you know help you what it looks like the shovel i do not have a bayonet or bayonet frog uh no shovel spade uh the shovel is not historically accurate it's actually my dad's when he was in the air force um solo shout out to him uh but bread bag not accurate uh canteen not accurate nor the shovel so keep that in mind okay without further ado let me show you my webbing gear. okay uh as you can see i have two ammo pouches on my belt with my belt buckle my shovel my canteen with my bread bag um i mean ammo pouches their ammo pouches hold five uh, rounds in each slot so 5 10 15 20 25 30 30 rounds in just three boxes so think of 10 and 10 so 60 rounds if they had extras they would slide them in here belt buckle it's a got mitoons it has a uh, what do you call it crown with olive leaves i believe i can't remember what they are but got mitoons meant god with us uh it's nice during the or later in 1916 i believe uh they were ordered to darken these uh i've done that somewhat but it comes off kind of easily but these were painted a uh, grayish color, which could also chip off. So if you're portraying a 1916 soldier, I would say it's really your preference. Let me, uh, the shovel would be 
water out here. Uh, it would be in a spade, which made it a lot lower, about the height, I would say, and uh, easier. It would have a bayonet right here. The bread bag would carry many items, uh, such as rations, uh, pen, paper, uh, a small Bible wasn't uncommon, so stuff like that. Uh, pictures of family, uh, coins, money, so stuff like that. The canteen, like for, yes, where is it? Somewhere. The canteen, as I've already told you, is a Czechoslovakian M60 canteen. Uh, the World War One German ones can be extremely expensive, so I do not have that on with me today. Uh, the tunic is a M10 tunic, I believe. Uh, buttons with red piping, uh, epaulets, I believe they are. Uh, two pockets, flat pockets. Let's see what I have in here. Pocket knife. <laughs> Uh, these could really hold anything. Then the pants, I believe, are M1906. I'm not too, too good with pants. Uh, they're pants with red lining. Uh, if you take... Oh, I also forgot to mention, there is a hook in here that just slides into that. So if I take off all my gear. Uh, uh, that's, those are the pants. Um, right here is a place for your pocket watch. I have one in here. Place for your pocket watch. Uh, just buttons along here. Uh, these buttons are meant for suspenders. I don't have those, so I just have clip-on ones. I hope to get uh, accurate suspenders soon, but for now, that's it. Um, shoes, I don't have them on with me right now uh, because I was trying to uh, <laughs> create this video uh, as soon as I could beca because it's supposed to be 30 mile per hour winds uh, in the next hour or so. But uh, early war, they would have hobnail jack boots. Uh, later in the war, they would have, uh, well, the hobnail jack boots were still popular, but rash or, uh, leather rationing and stuff like that, uh, made it so, uh, a lot of the soldiers had ankle boots. These were used with putties. Uh, oh shoot, I left those upstairs. Uh, my putties are upstairs, um, but they were wrapped around the leg. Um, wow, that was a, a little bit of my longer video. Um, I do hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something from today's video. I definitely forgot some stuff, uh, like undershirts and what some more detailed of uh, what goes into the bread bag. Uh, I definitely do think that Putty's video would be really, really fun and cool to make. Uh, be sure to see that in the near future. Um, if I, I probably got some modeling things wrong. Uh, I'd, I'd, I'm not too, too uh, experienced with the modeling. Uh, so please, uh, in the comment section, uh, tell me what I got wrong and got right. So that would, that would help out a lot. Um, again, like, share, comment, subscribe. Um, and I hope you enjoyed. Goodbye.